Welcome back. I knew it would come to this eventually. It is now time for us to discuss what are best termed intermediate level concepts. I will endeavor to teach you how to improve your technique, but your success is up to you, unfortunately. I trust you remember the term cancel. As you undoubtedly recall, I explained to you some time ago that cancel refers to the act of skipping the recovery period at the end of an attack and immediately performing another attack. Cancel can be used to describe many different sorts of actions in Blaze Blue. To put it another way, one can execute many different sorts of combos, depending where and how one cancels. Master this concept, and you shall unlock the secret to performing shatteringly destructive combos, while giving your foe only the briefest of opportunities to counterattack. Excellent! The first sort of cancel we will discuss is the jump cancel. As your tremendous mind has undoubtedly already deduced, this refers to cancelling the recovery of an attack by jumping. If it is possible to jump cancel any given attack, both normal and high jumps in any direction can be used for this purpose. However, one must keep in mind which attacks can be jump cancelled and which cannot varies from character to character. If we are to use Ragna as an example, then standing A, forward A, and down forward C can all be jump cancelled. Does understanding yet elude you? Perhaps an attempt will educate you, or perhaps it will kill you. Either way. Three, two, one, action! I'm back for more! Excellent! Impressive, considering who was attempting it. By using attacks that can be jump cancelled, you can extend the length of your combos or perform advanced maneuvers to attack your opponent. If your opponent blocks a move that can be jump cancelled, you can jump toward him to continue your attack or jump away to keep your distance. There is one thing to keep in mind, however. Many attacks can be jump cancelled when one's opponent blocks them. But some attacks can only be jump cancelled when they hit an opponent. Ragna, in your case, that would be your standing C. Study your character's strengths and weaknesses carefully, so that you can make excellent use of them. As the name suggests, a dash cancel allows you to cancel the recovery of an attack by dashing. Very few moves can be dash cancelled, but for the few that can, Dash cancelling allows one to quickly close the distance to one's opponent, making dash cancels especially useful for both combos and pressuring. In Ragnar's case, forward C and standing D can both be dash cancelled. However, the dash that occurs from a dash cancel is different from a normal dash in that it cannot be held. It forces one to move a specific distance. Now, why don't you try the dash cancel after a standing D attack? Three, two, one, action! How can this be? How can this be? Excellent! Exactly. Not terrible. Dash cancelling is especially useful when hitting one's opponents, as it often allows for continuation of combos. However, while you can perform a dash cancel when your attack is blocked, you will be rushing headlong at your opponent. In this case, you will be defenseless during your dash, so do be careful. I suggest you first make sure that your attack hits your opponent before attempting to dash cancel. Special attack moves can be executed through specific combinations of directional input and button presses. Each character's special attacks are different, but they are all quite useful and will play an important role in any battle. Ragnar has a move known as Hell's Fang, which can be executed by pressing down, then down back, then backward, and the A button. This move is ideal for practice. Press down, diagonal back and down, and backward A to use Hell's Fang. The key is careful and exact input of all commands. If you allow yourself to become tense or press buttons too quickly, you may input incorrect commands. Be careful and exact in your motions. Eventually, familiarity will lead to speed. Are you ready? 
Why don't you show me your hell's bang? Three, two, one, action! Hell's Excellent! If you can learn to execute hell's bang reliably, you will soon be able to master Gauntlet Hades, Dead Spike, and Balial Edge as well. Hell's Fang has a special follow-up attack. Press down, down back, backward, and D to perform this additional attack. Once you have performed Hell's Fang. One way of ensuring your timing is correct is to begin to enter the directional inputs before Hell's Fang hits your opponent. Then press the D button once Hell's Fang lands. Three, two, one, action! Hell's Fang! Can this be? This is a new chemist! Excellent! I admit you have exceeded my expectations. Although in all fairness, they were quite low to begin with. Now, let us move into the Inferno Divider. The input required to execute this special attack is somewhat more difficult than many others. You can perform Inferno Divider by pressing forward, down, then down forward, and then pressing C or D. It is not easy to do. Practice patiently until you have mastered it. Another way to picture this motion is while walking forward, push down, then diagonally down and forward, then C. Three, two, one, action! I'm, this I'm back for more! Excellent! Hmm, acceptable, I suppose. Once again, it is imperative that you carefully input the motions required in order to successfully execute a special attack. Once you have memorized them, you may begin to improve the speed at which you input them. If you would learn these special attacks, then you must practice, practice, practice. It may not make you perfect, but it will make you better. Special cancel refers to the process by which one cancels into a special attack. Many attacks can be special cancelled. If you perform your special attack while hitting an opponent with a move that can be special cancelled, or your opponent blocks a move that can be special cancelled, you can immediately perform that special attack seamlessly. First, try standing C, then Hell's Bang. Three, two, one. Excellent! And how did that feel? Is it possible your struggling mind has finally found purchase upon the sheer wall of learning? In any event, we will now proceed to practicing more practical combat. Try cancelling into the special attack from the revolver action sequence now. Be Three, two, one, action! Whenever you're ready! Look at this feet! This is a new... What a harsh Loser. world this is. Lesson clear! You've done well. I applaud you, if only once. Remember, however, that this is but the first step. Once you have mastered the special cancel, I suggest you proceed to practicing special canceling into different sorts of special attacks, taking note of what each situation requires. For instance, if you hit your opponent with standing B, then standing C, you can special cancel into Hell's Fang and continue your combo. Alternatively, should your victim block your standing B, then standing C, you might want to special cancel into a dead spike instead. Now, please allow me to explain the heat gauge, which you will find located at the bottom of the screen. I shall repeat myself if I must, as this is of paramount importance, but please do try to listen. The heat collected in your heat gauge is necessary to execute certain techniques, such as distortion drives, rapid cancels, Counter Assault, and Astral Heats. One can fill their heat gauge in the following ways, which are listed from most to least effective. 1. Hit an opponent with an attack. 2. Get hit by your opponent's attack. 3. Your opponent blocks your attack. 4. You block your opponent's attack. 
The heat gauge will also fill if you can manage to perform an instant block or an instant barrier, both of which will be discussed later on. Make sure to keep a close eye on your heat gauge and take advantage of it to give yourself an edge in battle. Excellent! A distortion drive is a powerful special attack that consumes 50% of your heat gauge. You must enter a series of commands to execute it, as with any other move, and you must obviously have a heat gauge that is at least 50% full. Adding a distortion drive to your combos can greatly increase the amount of damage dealt to your opponent. Per you are capable of making special attacks by this point, yes? Rather, go ahead and perform your carnage scissors for me. Three, two, one, action! Out of my way! Whenever you're ready, Carnage Scissors! This is an attempt! Next, we shall practice the art of executing a distortion drive from a revolver action sequence. For this combo, you will perform standing B, then standing C, then Carnage Scissors. Three, two, one, action! Carnet! This is a new kill! This is a new kill! Dead spike! Close one! Carnet scissors! I'll devour you! This is a new kill! There are many sorts of distortion drives. Some wield great destructive power while others make one invincible for a period of time, as the distortion drive is being performed. Additionally, when a distortion drive is activated, its victim will be unable to activate their break burst until such time as they recover from the attack, or are hit by a non-distortion drive attack, whichever comes first. As such, a distortion drive is often the perfect way to finish off an opponent. The Rapid Cancel is a technique that consumes 50% of one's heat gauge to immediately cancel the recovery of an attack. When your attack hits your opponent or is blocked by your opponent, press A, B, C simultaneously to perform one. The Rapid Cancel can cancel attacks that normally cannot, such as special attacks or even distortion drives. This technique can greatly improve both your attack and defense. Use it to create even more powerful combos and keep yourself safe from your opponent's retaliation. There are many ways one can make use of the Rapid Cancel, since it is capable of cancelling almost any move in the game. Naturally, this introduces a great deal of complexity, so I suggest you begin with simply cancelling attacks with long recoveries and thereby avoid retaliation. Making use of a Rapid Cancel on a move such as Hell's Fang will allow you to perform much more powerful combos that would be impossible without the use of the Rapid Cancel. You do understand, I hope? Very well. A trial by fire it is, then. Attempt a combo that uses a Rapid Cancel. Now! Three, two, one, action! Ready? I'm back for more! Whenever you're ready! Close one. Ready? I'm back for more.
entertain me. out of attacks with long recoveries in order to safeguard oneself. Inferno Divider is a special attack that has a very long recovery if it is blocked by your opponent. So slow, in fact, that you will almost certainly be hit. However, since a rapid cancel immediately cancels the recovery of an attack, using one here will ensure that you will be secure against counterattack. Enough talk. Let us put theory into practice. Try to cancel the recovery of Inferno Divider when it is blocked by using a rapid cancel. Three, two, one, action! Review before we move on. Use a rapid cancel when you wish to perform combos that are otherwise impossible. Or as a means of eliminating the recovery time of an attack in order to prevent your opponent from retaliating. Counter assault is a technique that one can perform whilst blocking to counter attack one's opponent. You can perform one by pressing forward A and B while you're blocking an attack. Don't hesitate to use one when your opponent is attacking relentlessly and you need room to breathe.
Go ahead and try using a counter assault now. Three, two, one, action! This is a new camp! Out of my way, oh, old harsh man. world this is. Lesson clear! The exact execution of a counter-assault varies by character. Some will simply strike their opponent, while others may throw, or even perform an evasive maneuver of some sort. And in case you haven't noticed by now, I am indeed speaking of Arachne and Noel, respectively. I suggest you try each character's counter-assault at least once, so that you are well prepared for any eventuality. This concludes the Intermediate Techniques section. It is long past time we began a discussion of Intermediate Defense Techniques. If you pay close attention, you may learn how to avoid taking damage. A valuable skill indeed! First, we have the Aerial Roll. If you are being hit by your opponent's attacks, and you are in mid-air, you can perform an aerial roll. It is of great importance that you take care to perform the aerial roll in the proper direction. Press forwards, backwards, or neutral, and any one of the A, B, or C buttons to perform an aerial roll in one of three different directions. If you press backwards and a button, you will perform a backwards aerial roll. If you press forward and a button, you will perform a forwards aerial roll. Or if you press only a button, you will simply execute an aerial roll in place. Now, why don't you try to perform an aerial roll after getting hit? Three, two, one, action! What's the matter? Yeah. Opening! Is that it? Excellent! Because you will be unable to move immediately following an aerial roll, it presents an opportunity for your opponent to continue their attack. Therefore, it is important to be sure to aerial roll in a way your opponent will have difficulty intercepting. The rule of thumb is to use your aerial roll to put as much distance as possible between you and your opponent, paying special attention to your opponent's position as you execute the aerial roll. If you are in a corner, an aerial roll can be especially useful in getting yourself out of said corner. You can dictate the timing of an aerial roll by entering the command sooner or later. Make use of this to confuse your enemies when using an aerial roll. Press a button the moment you are slammed to the ground to perform an emergency roll. Do keep in mind, however, that you have limited opportunities to perform an emergency roll. Even so, you would be wise to always attempt emergency rolls whenever a possible opportunity presents itself. During an emergency roll, you will be invulnerable, so you needn't worry about being hit. What are you waiting for? I wish to see if you are capable of performing an emergency roll. Three, two, one, action! What's the matter?
The invulnerability you gain during the emergency roll ends the moment the roll is completed. So be prepared to defend yourself. Even the tiniest bit of preparation will likely prove more helpful than you might think. Escaping with an invulnerable backstep, attacking with an invulnerable special attack, or simply blocking with a crouching guard are all excellent choices once one has finished an emergency roll. When you find yourself knocked to the ground, as you inevitably will, you can rise from your semi-recumbent posture in a number of ways through the utilization of various directional inputs and button presses. Press back and a button to perform a back roll. Press forward and a button to perform a forward roll. Press down and a button to perform a quick wake up. You can also perform a neutral roll by just pressing a button with no directional input. Since it is possible for sadists to attack characters who are lying down, be sure to take advantage of the numerous ways one can wake up to avoid additional attacks from your opponents. When you go down, do whatever it may take to rise to your feet again. Excellent! A forward roll is a technique wherein one moves forward as one arises from the ground. A character is invulnerable during the beginning of a forward roll. A forward roll is useful when one wishes to switch positions with one's opponent. But as the invulnerable period is quite short on a forward roll, one must take care not to get hit during their roll. Take extra care when penned into a corner. Now, go ahead and try a forward roll. Three, two, one, action! That's where you were! Excellent! A backward roll is a technique wherein one moves backward as one stands up. It has a much greater period of invulnerability than the forward roll, but it still has a period of time during which one is vulnerable. It is quite useful when one wishes to keep one's distance from an enemy. Now, go ahead and try a backward roll. Three, Three two, two, one, one. action! Whenever you're ready! Excellent! The neutral role is similar to the emergency role except that it is performed as a wake-up. It has complete invulnerability, like the emergency roll. It is the safest way to leap back into the fray. Now, why don't you try a neutral roll? Three, Three two, two, one, one. action! Ah! Excellent! As with the emergency roll, you are likely to come under attack the moment the neutral roll ends. The same strategies used for minimizing danger to oneself after an emergency roll apply here as well. Although you will be completely defenseless until you finish the quick wake-up animation, this is the quickest way to return to a less recumbent position. Additionally, the quick wake-up does not trigger the same shining visual effect that other wake-up options do which allows one to fool an opponent who is watching for neutral, backward, forward rolls. If you believe you understand, perhaps you would be so kind as to show me your quick wake up. Three, two, one, action! Ah! Here! Excellent! The later half of the quick wake up can be cancelled with a special attack or by a guard. Using the barrier guard will show you when you can begin blocking. And I recommend you stick to this particular method until you can determine the exact timing. Alternatively, you can use a special attack to perform a sneak attack against your opponent. The barrier block is a guard technique that is somewhat stronger than a normal block. When one performs this technique, a, a barrier guard will allow you to block certain attacks that cannot normally be blocked in mid-air reduce the damage taken from special attacks, 
and increase the distance your opponent is pushed by your guard. Keep in mind that after a barrier block, you will be unable to act for a longer period of time than after a normal block. That said, the difference is negligible, so you needn't worry too much about it. Press backward A and B to use a standing barrier guard. You can also perform an aerial barrier guard, but it also bears mentioning that should you hold the A and B buttons, the barrier guard will remain. You are capable of using barrier... Three, two, one, action! What's the matter? Whenever you're ready! Excellent! A barrier guard can be used at times when a normal guard cannot. For this reason, you can make use of it to quickly stop a dash. Bear this in mind, as this property will be of use when you wish to adjust the distance between yourself and an opponent. Instant block is a guard technique that is a more powerful variation of the normal guard. It is performed by blocking right as you are about to be hit by an opponent's attack. If you are successful, your care... Successfully performing an instant block makes it somewhat easier for one to retaliate against one's opponent, as the time it takes to block an attack is somewhat shorter than with a normal guard. In addition, your heat gauge will increase by 3%. Perhaps you should try one. The unkempt ninja will attack you using standing A, then standing B, then crouching B. Do your best to use an instant block during that series of attacks. Three, two, one, action! What's the matter? What the? That's where you were. Stop yeah! Excellent! Instant Barrier is a guard technique that possesses the properties of the instant block and the barrier block. If you succeed in an instant block whilst using your barrier guard, then your character will create a barrier and glow white. Because the instant barrier has all the properties of a barrier guard, it will allow you to block attacks that cannot normally be blocked in the air, reduce all damage from special attack, and increase the distance that your opponent will be pushed back. In addition, as it had the properties of the instant block, it takes only a fraction of the time a normal block would take and increases your heat gauge by 3%. Indeed, you might say that it has all of their strengths and none of their weaknesses. I imagine you have grown rather tired of him, as I have. But the vociferous ninja will again... 3, 2, 1, action! Got you. What, what was that? Excellent! An instant block or instant barrier is not as simple to perform as a normal guard. But the benefits of exit while you are still learning, do not wait until the last moment to attempt either of these techniques. Instead, input the command a bit earlier. A throw escape is performed by pressing B and C at the very moment you are grabbed by your opponent. The amount of time one has to perform a throw escape is dependent on what color the throw indicator is. If the indicator is green, the time is short. If, however, the indicator is purple, then you have somewhat more time. To begin, we shall have you attempt to perform a throw escape. Press the buttons only once, just as you are thrown. If you press B and C repeatedly, your attempt will fail. Although I imagine you have grown quite accustomed to failure. Three, two, one, action! Nice there! Here! What's the matter? Suck his life! No way! I see! You are not Excellent. bad! Excellent! Now, why don't you attempt to do the same, but while blocking your opponent's attack? You will have more time to escape the throw if you do so, making your attempt that much easier. Three, two, one, action! I see! Out of my way, old oh, harsh world this is. Lesson clear! Ideally, one activates one's throw escape the moment they are grabbed. But to do so requires reflexes I fear you do not know, nor shall ever possess. If you intend to try, however, it is of utmost importance that you analyze your opponent's behavioral patterns. 
so that you may predict when they will attempt to throw you. Here, I shall give you a rather advanced technique. If you input backward or down backward with A, B and C beforehand, you can use a barrier guard while also entering the command for a throw escape. In this way, one can attempt to barrier guard and escape a throw at the same time. The guard primer represents the strength of your guard. It is reflected with the number of bullet-shaped icons at the top of the screen. Blocking certain attacks will expend a guard primer. Should you expend all of your guard primers, your character will experience a condition known as guard crush. Additionally, you may experience a condition known as humiliation. If you use a green break burst, which will be discussed later, your maximum number of guard primers will be reduced by half. A guard crush will make you temporarily defenseless, which puts you in a very dangerous position indeed. Do not let it happen to you, or you will regret it a great deal. When you are down to your last guard primer, it is possible to use a barrier guard to avoid entering the guard crush state. Doing so will dramatically reduce your barrier gauge, however. Of course, if you can inflict guard crush on your opponent, they will also be defenseless. Should this happen, take full advantage of their weakness and grind them beneath your heel. First, attempt to reduce your opponent's number of guard primers until they enter the guard crush state. Three, two, one, action! Dead Sparrow! Dead Sparrow! Dead Sparrow! Dead Sparrow! Dead Sparrow! Excellent! Depleted Guard Primers will recover over time. When a Guard Primer is nearing restoration, it will begin to flash. However, should an additional Guard Primer be lost before a flashing one is restored, the flashing Guard Primer will not be restored. The burst icon is located under the health gauge and indicates whether or not you can use the break burst or astral heat. Each time you use either one of them, a burst icon will be consumed. One burst icon will be given to each player at the start of the first round. Also, the first time a player loses a round, they are given another burst icon. In other words, regardless of the number of rounds required to win a match, the maximum number of burst icons a player can possess at any time will always be two. Excellent! The break burst technique makes one invulnerable and creates a shockwave that throws one's opponent away. It will consume one aforementioned burst icon, which is located beneath the health gauge. There are two types of break bursts. One is used when one is guarding or being hit and the other is used when one is not. The gold break burst will send one's opponent flying into the air. It is possible to follow this up with an attack against one's opponent. I find it rather enjoyable to watch my enemies tossed around the stage, helpless against my onslaught. First, why don't you show me your gold break burst? Three, two, one, action! What's the matter? Burst! 
affects that. First. Activating this move will throw out a green shockwave. If your opponent is hit by it, then they will be thrown away from you. This is one way to prevent a cocky opponent from becoming too sure of themselves. Since this move can be used while one is being hit by one's opponent, it is useful as an emergency evasive technique. However, since it deals no damage to one's opponent, it is not very effective as an attack technique. Additionally, there is something you should be aware of, although I believe I have mentioned it before. Using the green break burst will reduce your maximum guard promise by one half. Do try and remember that. Since using a green break burst twice in one round would drastically reduce the number of guard primers available, it is often best to avoid using two green break bursts if possible. I know it will be unpleasant, but the unwashed ninja is about to attack you. Please attempt to use a green break burst on him. Three, two, one, action! Stop! Burst! No! Uh, you guys no, can't stop. Prince. Lesson clear! When your barrier gauge drops to zero, you will enter the danger state. When you are in the danger state, all damage you receive is multiplied by 1.5. The danger state lasts until more than half of your barrier gauge is restored. Excellent! Should you repeatedly perform passive actions, such as back steps or backward jumps, a warning message will appear on the screen that says, Negative Warning. If you continue this cowardly behavior, then your character will find themselves surrounded by a reddish aura, an indicator that they have entered the negative state. As with the danger state, the negative state will cause all damage done to you to be multiplied by a factor of one and a half. The negative state will be nullified as soon as you begin showing some aggression, dashing toward your opponent for instance. The danger state and the negative state can occur at the same time. Should this happen, you will take two and a quarter times as much damage as you normally would. It is rare, yes, but very, very bad. Excellent! I shall now teach you how to determine the number of times you have hit your opponent during a combo. If you intend to accomplish anything with your combos, I suggest you listen closely. The large number is how many times your combo has hit your opponent. If this combo cannot be escaped from, then this number will appear in red. If, however, it would be possible for your opponent to escape, the hit counter will instead be blue. Put in words that you might understand. Red indicates combos that cannot be escaped from, while blue indicates combos that can be escaped from. The number under the hit count indicates where in the combo escape was possible. For example, if the hit count is 6 and the number below is 5, 
It means the combo could have been escaped after the fifth hit landed, but before the sixth hit landed. The three most recent escape points will be recorded. In other words, once the fourth escape point appears, the first will be deleted. Use this information to ensure that your combos have as few escape points as possible. This will allow you to deal far more damage. This number is particularly useful when learning combos that do not let your opponent escape. Finally, the number at the very bottom indicates the amount of damage you have dealt to your opponent. As you learn more combos, pay special attention to the amount of damage each one deals. Uh, no regrets, loser! Lesson clear! If you should manage to hit an opponent while they are in the middle of an attack of their own, or while they are recovering from certain techniques, a counter hit will occur. Counter attacks have different stun periods or knockback distances than their normal counterparts. With counter hits, you can execute combos you would normally be unable to do. In Ragnar's case, when he counter hits an enemy attack with Hell's Fang or his Crouching D, he can continue the combo by dashing and then performing a standing B attack. Now, why don't you try continuing your combo from a counter hit? Three, two, one, action! What? I can hardly wait! What's the matter? Excellent! Counter hits make it possible to perform more powerful combos or perform normal combos with greater ease. If you wish to improve your skills even more, I would recommend that you learn to plan your counter hits to lead into appropriate combos. Try and master the use of attacks that cause different effects on a counter hit. And learn which attacks can be used to follow up when a counter hit occurs. A fatal counter is a type of counter hit that is even more devastating than a normal counter hit. When your opponent is hit by a fatal counter hit, all attacks that follow in that combo will stun your opponent for slightly longer than usual. This allows you to perform certain advanced combos that are only possible after a fatal counter hit. Each character has one or two attacks that can cause fatal counter hits. The conditions for a fatal counter hit are the same as a normal counter hit, apart from the fact that they are triggered by different attacks. In Ragnar's case, his crouching C causes a fatal counter hit when he counters an attack with it. Why don't you try performing a combo immediately after a fatal counter hit? Remember, the only way to connect multiple standing D attacks in a row is to perform a fatal counter hit at the start of the combo. Three, two, one, action! Ready. No! Ready. No! What's the matter? I can hardly wait. Shut up! 
No! Counter! No! Oh, Kimmy! Ready. No! I won't lose you! Counter! Kimmy! Counter! Kimmy! Counter! No! Counter! What's the matter? I can hurt! that is a throw. As with other counters, it occurs when you hit your opponent during their attack. With a throw counter, you hit them with a throw to interrupt their attack, or as they are recovering from certain techniques. The throw counter is more or less identical to a normal throw, with the important exception that one cannot use the throw escape to get out of the throw. Since throws can often lead to massive damage, you would do well to use throw counters whenever the situation allows for them. It is impossible to use a break burst after being hit by a throw. 
So this is one way in which you can guarantee that you will deal damage to your opponent. Surely you understand by now? Let us simulate a situation in which a throw counter would occur. The vulgar ninja will attack you with his standing D. Attack him with a throw before he can hit you. Three, two, one, action! Ready. Excellent! It is best to attempt a throw counter when you have the advantage in close combat or after you have blocked an attack with a very long recovery animation, such as Ragnar's Inferno Divider. If a throw escape is incorrectly attempted, then it becomes impossible for the victim to escape the throw. This is known as a throw reject miss. If you wish to force your opponent in the throw reject miss, it is best to trick them into attempting a throw escape at the wrong time by delaying the timing of your throw. It is easiest to force your opponent into a throw reject miss by throwing them when they are pressing other buttons, such as after an opponent blocks a jumping attack, or you hit with your standing or crouching A, or even when your opponent attempts an aerial roll. Why don't you try it for yourself? Go ahead and try using a throw immediately after a standing A attack. Three, two, one, action! You're not, not having your way! That was dangerous! You're not having your way! I won't lose you! I can hardly That was dangerous! Ready? Gimme! No regrets! Loser! Lesson clear! An attack clash is what will happen if two attacks hit one another at the same time. When an attack clash occurs, it is possible for both players to rapid cancel or cancel into normal or special attacks. However, it is not possible to cancel an attack clash into walking, jumping, brake bursting, or creating a barrier guard. If you do not cancel the attack clash, your character will simply continue their attack animation as though nothing had happened. Of course, attack clashes rarely occur, but it does not hurt to be aware of them. Excellent! Stagger is a unique state that occurs when a player is hit by certain techniques. If you do not recover from stagger as soon as possible, you will be completely defenseless. It is therefore important to recover from this state as quickly as possible. Press any attack button other than D during stagger to recover from it. One thing, the action of recovering from stagger also functions as a standing guard. You are, however, still vulnerable to low attacks at this point. So it is best to perform a crouching guard if you anticipate a low attack. You need to press the button only once to recover from stagger. If you hit the button too many times, you may accidentally perform an attack, so do be careful. Very well then. Go ahead and try to recover from stagger. Three, two, one, action! Drop it. it! I can hardly wait! Here. Drop it! it. Yeah. Drop it! it. <laughs> Excellent! An Astral Heat is a special sort of attack that can utterly defeat an opponent in a single hit should it connect. As it is so powerful, the conditions to use one are rather stringent. 1. You are at match point. 
You only need to win one more round for victory. 2. Your opponent's health gauge is below 35%. 3. Your heat gauge is at 100%. 4. You must have at least one burst icon available. If you can meet all four of the above conditions, then your character's portrait will begin to flash white. Once you have entered this state, you can perform your astral heat. It will look rather impressive as it crushes your opponent into dust. But whether or not it is best to use it in any given situation is entirely up to you. You are rather anxious to try it, aren't you? Very well. Why don't you try and finish off your opponent using your astral heat then? Three, two, one, action! I'll show you the power of the Azure! I'll show you. Lesson clear! The commands required to summon each character's astral heat vary, so you would be wise to examine the command list. I believe we've done enough for now. You've still much to learn, but I think we've covered the basics quite well. See that you continue to hone your technique. It is rare to hear such words from me, but good luck! <laughs>